Well, good evening, City Impact Church, this fine Wednesday night. I've been chomping at the bit for this Wednesday. It's, it's been an exciting uh, walk with God this last while. I don't know about you, but it's kind of stirring us to go to the next level in so many areas, so many ways. In our, I'm seeing people in their walk with God, in their studying of the Word, in their boldness, in so many areas. As a church, I really believe that we're not coming back the same. We're not coming back to life as normal. And we're, you're going to be surprised when you come back what's going to happen in this house. and what's been, we've, we've not been sitting with idle hands, by the way, while all this is going on. You're going to see a lot of change. And, and we're seeing a lot of change in the church wanting to reach out to the world we're even seeing the world changing where people are doing good deeds for each other and all kinds of stuff is happening where people are reevaluating what's important in life and all these things and uh, I, wa I want to really talk tonight about being conquerors this is kind of what has been stirring inside of me this week and this last while and uh, that we were never called to sit in a church building. Did you hear me? We were never called to that. Yes, we can come here, we can celebrate. Yes, it's where we come to come together and, you know, celebrate what God is doing. But if you look at the early church, the church was outside of the building more than it was in. It was outside of the building that evangelism happened. It was outside of the building that miracles were happening, signs and wonders. It was outside of a building that tongues were spoken and people were changed. And, and so we need to understand, we need to get back out of the building. We need to get out there. We need to be winning souls. And so I want to talk about this more than conquerors. I want to talk about, first of all, our armor. The armor of God. Paul talked about it in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, and I'm not going to go there and start going through all of it. But Paul, you got to realize, first of all, Paul was Roman. And also, he, he, he did some time. <laughs> Paul did some time. He, if you don't know what doing time is, he, he did jail. He was in jail a lot often and uh, and he, he was in jail and obviously these were because it was the Romans that arrested him it was he was he he asked to be sent before um, the Roman Emperor and so it was he was around Roman guards all the time and so Paul starts to talk about the Roman guards armor as our armor. So he talked about the helmet. He talked about uh, the shield. He talked about, we saw that the other day when I had the shield and the sword and all that. And he talks about that as our armor. And uh, so he, I believe he's not only talking about what they're wearing, but he's talking about the Roman soldier as a whole. And this is where we need to get an understanding of this. And, and we are tonight. We're going to get an understanding of this because the Roman soldiers, you, you can write this down if you want. If you don't want to, I don't care. But the Roman soldier was never created to protect Rome. Their job was not to sit in Rome and wait for somebody to come and attack. That was never their purpose. The purpose of the Roman soldier was to go and to conquer neighboring countries, neighboring villages, neighboring cities. That was their job. They would go out and they would come back with the spoils of those places and then they would set up shop there and they, and they would increase the Roman Empire or the Kingdom of Rome. So Paul tells us, as believers, we are equipped like the Roman soldier so if we are equipped with the same armor as him, then it should have the same purpose for believers that it did for Roman soldiers. So you were equipped with that not to protect so many... Huh, I'm going to go there. So many pastors are so worried about the 15 sheep that they have and try to protect them and try to keep them and, and da 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 and if I have enough programs, they'll stay instead of being minded to teach them to go out and win souls, to be 
Heavenly minded is to say, I'm going to increase the kingdom of heaven. We are not here as a church to keep the 100, 150, whatever people we have. We are here to win the city. We are here to win the province. We are here to conquer. We are here to go out and win souls. In the midst of that, you can't just walk into the enemy's camp and he's going to let you. Of course, he's going to throw darts. He's going to attack. That is what our armor is for. As we are walking forward, take, we're going in the enemy's camp. We're taking what belongs to the kingdom of God. We're taking ground. We're gaining ground. When we're doing that, yes, he's going to throw darts. He's going to throw stuff at us. We've got a shield. We block that. But we don't block it. We don't cower behind it and pray that he doesn't kill us. No, we block it and move on. I've watched enough movies about Roman soldiers and, and about, about warriors. I want to talk about warriors. I don't want to raise up an army that is hirelings. I want to raise up warriors. A warrior, he lives for battle. He is not scared of battle. I've watched these movies and you can tell which one's a warrior. He is the one that, that is walking forward and he's just blocking stuff. He's not blocking stuff out of fear. He's blocking it because he's saying, okay, these are coming. Yeah. I need to get over there. I need to get at the enemy. Just I block those few things that are coming, but he's looking. Where's the enemy? Where's the where's the where's the leader? Where's the chief? Which one is it that I need to knock down? Where's the bulwarks? Where's and so we are called, Paul says, to put on this armor. And and listen, and, and I'm not belittling, this armor is very crucial in going there. Because we're not going there on our own. We're going there as warriors for Christ. So we do need to have the Word of God as our, as our belt that holds everything together. That belt held everything in place. Without that belt, you're carrying everything and you can't fight. With the belt, everything just stays in place and you're free to fight. And so that belt holds everything in place. And they also, they, they were called to move forward. They were never called to retreat. The armor doesn't have a back plate. Did you hear me? It would never turn your back on the enemy. Never walk forward. Your best defense is a great offense. You know, you know why they didn't they, the Roman soldiers weren't all sitting in Rome protecting Rome? I'll tell you why. Because Rome wasn't under attack. Rome was attacking. Your best defense is a great offense. If you're attacking a village, they're not sending nobody to attack yours. They're protecting theirs. The one that's protecting is the one that's going to lose. And we know it's a fact because Rome went on to become a great kingdom. I mean, it was an empire. They vanquished, I mean, at the time, they vanquished the then known world. They were everywhere. And they would send in soldiers and they were intimidating. And they would walk in and, and they were, and here's the thing. These soldiers were trained properly. And this is, this is what this is here. The church, the building, is where we come to train. It's where we come to be taught. It's where we come to become strong so we can go out. It's where we get equipped with our armor. Amen. The Roman soldier, his, he had, some people don't know this, but he had his shoes. He had parade shoes or walking around shoes, I call them, that would have been something like cleats today, you know. They had, they had little nubs or you know, one inch spikes. And, you know, so that was his walking around shoes. But when they were going to conquer... He changed his shoes. Whew. And he put on three-inch spikes. The reason for that was, is now he had to hold ground. He couldn't be pushed back. Those spikes were there so that he was firmly secure in his footing. Because there's no retreating. You're moving forward. Nobody's pushing you back. And so they had this on their feet. They had their parade ones. And then those spikes represent the gospel of peace, the good news, or the word of God. And so we have to be strong in the word of God when we're going forward so we can't be pushed back. Come on. Huh. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go there. You know the parade shoes what they are. Oh, praise the Lord. How are you doing? Oh, blessed and highly favored. 
That's the church shoes. That's the Sunday shoes. When you go out there and all hell breaks loose, your little Christian sayings go out the door and you need to have some firm word inside of you that is deep set inside of you. See, those spikes would go deep in the ground. That word has to be not just in your head. Well, I say that because the ushers say that. I say that because pastor says that. You know, no, this is a knowing on the inside. It's a, a word that goes deep down. Those spikes went deep in the ground. They weren't like the other ones. See, the first spikes, the one inch, that's just head knowledge. That's what that represents. But the other spikes represents heart knowledge. You can't go to war with head knowledge. You have to go to war with heart knowledge because with the heart man believes, not with the head. And so you can't, you can't go to war and be strong with, with what mama said, papa said, pastor said. You got to know it for yourself. You have to take time to meditate the word, to study the word, get it in your heart and be strong. It's part of your armor. It's part of your armor. Know your armor. Those soldiers, they knew their armor. They were very acquainted with their armor. As a matter of fact, they knew this armor can save my life when I'm out there. They would take their shield. Those shields, they were made out of wood and leather. Every day they would take that leather and soak it so that it was wet so when fiery darts came, it couldn't catch on fire. Oh, come on. And so they would sharpen their sword. <laughs> a dull sword doesn't make a great warrior. You need a sharp sword, you know. And so they would sharpen their, they knew their equipment. And they, they knew its purpose is to go out and to win. They were also told that it's better to go out and die in the battlefield than come back a loser. They were told this. I'm telling you, they were told you're better to die a hero than to live a loser. <laughs> I know that sounds harsh, but it's true. They were told it's better to die with your sword in your hand and cowering behind a shield in the field. And they even had, uh, they even had a saying, and we hear it a lot. I'm, I know I, I've seen the tattoos and all that growing up, and a lot of people, if you've been, you know, if you're older, if you've been in wars, or if you've been in the army, the navy, they'll have this thing, death before dishonor. You know, it's usually a knife through the head of a panther or a skull or whatever it might be. But here's the Roman logo, and it was Mate Prima di Dishonor, and it was a knife through the head of a Roman soldier's helmet with a skull. Say, what did that mean? It's better you die in the field with a knife through your head than come home a loser. It was strong in them. So you say, well, boy, they didn't have much of a leader. They did. They had a great leader. Because of this, they won many wars because they had no fear. Look, I'd rather die in the field and I'll be a hero. See, to them... You know, everything was, they'll probably make a statue of me. They'll probably sing my name in the streets like he died a hero. But for us, if we die, we gain because Paul said to die is gain and to live is Christ. And it doesn't matter if I die or live. Either way, I live because if I die physically in this earth, I'm in heaven with him. So I can't lose. So I'm going to go out. I have no fear. I have no fear of man. What can man do to you? say no to you, shun you, not invite you out for lunch, <laughs> you know, talk smack about you. Oh, well, you know, dead people don't really notice somebody talking smack about them. <laughs> and we've died to ourselves. So Paul was trying to let us know we are to be like the Roman soldier, except we're not fighting we're not fighting to conquer for Rome. We're fighting to conquer for the kingdom of God. We are here to fight for the kingdom of God. It's what we're called to do. Now here's the neat thing about fighting for the kingdom of God. Is that he has already won the battle. And he fights with us. And so, you know, all we have to do is to go and take what he's given us by faith. And I want to talk about that. Here's the thing with the God we serve. There's a song right now that's out. It's off the chart. And it's called uh, Rattle. And there's a part in it that says this. Since when 
has impossible ever stopped you. You serve the God of the impossible. You serve a God that it doesn't matter where he sends you to conquer. If there's a mountain, he'll move it. If there's a, an ocean, he'll part it. If there's a giant, he'll slay it. If there's a wall, he'll drop it. What, if there's a fire, he'll quench it. It doesn't matter what's in front of you. You serve the God that impossible has never stopped him. He is impossible to stop. He lives in you and he fights for you. And so the children of Israel, they they didn't have to knock the wall down. They just had to obey God by faith, and God knocked the wall down. And so they didn't have to part the Red Sea. They didn't have to try to figure out how to do it. They just had to, by faith, start walking in it. And so I'm telling you, as we walk forward, our God walks with us, and the God of the impossible will cause things that are in front of us. If it's finances, he'll bring them. Whatever you have need of to get the victory He's already provided for you. He's already provided for you. It's amazing what God can do. You know, in the midst of everything that's going on in this land, we as a church have not skipped a beat. Not only that, when you come back, you're going to see that we've been working, and God, nothing has slowed down. Nothing will slow down. If anything, we're going to amp up. Come on. We're going to do all that we can to win people to the kingdom of God. In the midst of all that the enemy has thrown, the persecution and all the things he's doing against the church, the church is growing, praise God. In the midst of saying you can't get in a building, well, we went on the airwaves and I'm seeing church after church after church report they're getting more people watching them than ever before. And it's caused churches that didn't have an online presence to have an online and use all the resources that are available to them. Them. little country churches online praise God and so we're we're in a day that's exciting but we have to understand we've been it's in Romans 8 37 says this nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. A conqueror, a conqueror. If you go research what conqueror means, it means somebody that goes about conquering. It means somebody that goes about taking land, taking cities, taking things that were not his before, but he's taken them. And so we are expanding the kingdom of Christ by taking families, villages, cities, provinces, and countries for Jesus Christ. We're going to see the biggest move of God that we've ever seen. It's a, it's a great time to be alive, church. It's a great time to be alive. And we cannot, we cannot let what we see in front of us stop us. You know, just, just to share with you as a pastor, I've pastored a few works in 20-some years, and I've seen, I've seen times when there was so much money coming in that I, I didn't know half the time what to do with half it. We were banking it and we were praying and saying, God, what do you want us to do? Is there projects and stuff like that? I've seen other times when we had projects and there was no money coming in. And But you know, Paul said, whether in lack or whether in abundance, you got to understand what Paul was saying. He said, whether in lack or whether in abundance, what he was saying, sometimes you don't have the money in your hand. But the same God that can do it when you have the money in your hand can do it when there's none. You operate by faith all the time. And there's seasons. I've seen this in ministry. There's seasons. There's a season where all of a sudden money's pouring in and you're doing things. There's another season where money's not pouring in, but you're still doing things because you're doing it by faith. And God keeps us close to him because sometimes when the money's already there, we can forget about the, the God that brought the money and he has to snap us to attention and allow us to see lack in front of us, but not lack in us. And so it doesn't matter what's happening in the land. Doesn't matter. The same God that you had faith in when you had a job and a paycheck was coming every week is the same God when there's no paycheck coming in. He's the same God. He can meet your needs anyway. And it doesn't mean that you stop going out and winning the loss. We are called to win the loss. And we are called to be warriors and conquerors. We are not called to sit behind a shield cowering from the enemy that was never why that shield was created that roman soldier his armor was never created for him to stay home afraid that armor was created for him to go out and conquer 
And Paul said, you are more than conquerors. Paul said, like that Roman soldier, you're called to go out into the world and do conquest for the kingdom that you're from. Amen. I just want to encourage you. It's exciting times. I know I'm saying that word a lot, excited, but I am. I'm really excited. And I want to see us do everything that God has called us to do because we're not here by mistake. We're here because God said, in this time period, you're the laborers, you're the workers, you're the conquerors, you're the victors that I've put in the land to do the job. And he will get the job done. And those that refuse to do it, he'll step over them and somebody else will do it. I don't want to be stepped over. <laughs> I want to be part of that army. Praise God. Well, amen. Well, before we go tonight, I just want to make sure, because I know there's a lot of people listening from all over, and maybe, maybe some of you tuned in because a family member shared this, or you might not even be watching it on, on Wednesday night. It might be Thursday morning. It might be whenever you're watching this. I just want to give you the opportunity that if you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, you've never asked him to be Lord of your life, I want to tell you this is the best kingdom you could ever be in. And I want to give you that opportunity. I'm going to say a prayer with you, and if, if you mean it from your heart, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you believe in your heart that Jesus died and was raised from the dead, and you confess him with your mouth, you shall be saved. It's as simple as that, friend. And so I want to pray this prayer with you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus. Forgive me of my past. From this day forward, I will serve you with all my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, if you said that prayer, we want to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Great things are ahead for you. We love you, and God bless you.